Hello and welcome to Tracy Momi Reads. I am back again with another video. I'm going to uh, apologize at the top of the video because you will more than likely hear my washer and dryer uh, in the background or maybe I've just pointed it out to you. I don't know. But they are both on because I am so far behind <laughs> with washing and then there was an issue with the washing machine this morning so I couldn't finish up. So I'm multitasking right now. I'm doing a video and unfortunately the laundry room is across from my reading area. So hopefully that's not going to be a distraction. I don't think it will be for as loud as I talk. I'm sure I can um, project my voice over it. So this week what I wanted to talk about starting off on the video. First of all, you see my cute little shirt here that I made myself. My, um, I don't know if this is my, well, it's my first t-shirt that I've done with my uh, new Cricut machine that I got for Christmas. But, you know, so apropos to do uh, something for the channel, especially since a couple of weeks ago, I hit 1,000 subscribers. Yay! Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who has subscribed and helped me uh, to reach that goal. It was something that I had set for the end of 2023 and it didn't happen. We were so close, but I am there now and I'm just looking forward to continuing to grow the channel and um, continuing to bring, you know, more book reviews and other bookish content for you guys to watch. And I would love your feedback in the comments and just letting me know, you know, more things that you want to see or if you have any book recommendations or things that you think I should check out and, you know, review. And so uh, what I want to talk about today, actually, is I wanted to um, talk about the trip we took uh, for spring break uh, because it is infused with some bookish details. OK, so we traveled to Europe. We flew to Europe um, and ended up. Like, we left on a Sunday, and we got there. It was Monday. It was, like, the next day. And the first place that we flew into was London, right? So, uh, in London, it was a very cold and rainy. Um, and I've been to London a few times. And every time that I've gone, it's been cold and rainy. I know that once I went around my birthday, which was... Or maybe right before my birthday. It was, like, in April. Then we went in March. And then my husband and I, one time we went in February. So I don't know if like summer months are much warmer or any better, but I've never been to London where it is not gloomy, cold, and rainy. So for me, that's just like the norm. Like, you know, it's like always like that. But um, when this time, like I said, around, we took our kids. They, my daughter has been talking about, oh, we should take a trip to Europe. We should take a trip to Europe. So we normally take a, a family vacation every summer. And we have not taken any in the last, you know, few years saving up for this big, you know, European uh, vacation. And my husband decided to do it around spring break, which you would think that, oh, my God, that's going to be awful because, number one, it's a shorter window of time than the summer. And maybe because everybody's going there for spring break. Not the case. Like, we lucked out because it was not really, you know, a bunch of tourists everywhere, um, with the exception of Rome, which I'll talk about. But in uh, London, we went to the British, uh, I'm just looking at my notes because I want to make sure I get everything on here. We went to the British Library and that was something I wanted to do because it was close by where we were staying. You know, shout out to my family because they indulged me on some side excursions with book stuff while we were in Europe. You know, most people uh, who, you know, would go there and be like, oh, we got other stuff to do, other stuff to see. But there were, you know, a few things that I wanted to incorporate into the trip. So we went to the British uh, Library and it is one of the largest libraries in the world. Um, it opened uh, in July of 1973. They have books, journals, magazines, sound recordings, um, uh, maps, uh, manuscripts, just all kind of things that are archived and stored at that particular library. But check this out. They have, uh, not only do they have 170 to 200 million items at that library, they have over 13.9 million books. So, I mean, you know, we're talking about every type of category, every type of genre, everything that you could imagine, um, they have stored there uh, in terms of, you know, categories of books. 
Uh, but the thing that I thought was really cool because I had seen a post that someone did on Instagram and so to get to see it in person was pretty cool. I don't know if you're familiar with the movie Interstellar, but there's this scene where Matthew McConaughey's character like goes back. It's, it's like a whole time thing as most Christopher Nolan movies are, but he goes back um, in time or maybe he's in the future, we don't know, but there's this bookshelf thing involved, right? There's a bookshelf involved. I'm not gonna tell you, I'll give you any spoilers for the movie, but it looked just like the glass bookshelves in that library. I mean, look at this. If you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But yeah, it will, there were a lot of people in there like working, studying, I guess, I don't know, working on stuff, but it will, there were a lot of people in the library that, you know, they looked to be, I guess, locals or people that were just using it for everyday things that you use a library for. I just thought it was really cool to be able to experience that and say that I had gone, you know, inside. I mean, because obviously I couldn't check anything out or whatever, but we walked around and just kind of, you know, uh, ooh and awed at like the layout and everything. Very, very cool experience. Um, another thing that we did when we were there, we, we walked around, like we went obviously to, um, see, you know, for my kids to be able to see Big Ben, the big clock, um, the House of Parliament. We saw the London Eye. We didn't get on it. That, that's like hours, you know, of, uh, being up there because it goes around so slow. And I was content just, you know, being able to get a visual of it. Uh, we went by Buckingham Palace and walked through St. James Park, you know, had some, cocoa and um they do this thing with waffles and nutella my daughter got that so we were just you know being tourists enjoying each other's company so, you know as we were walking around lo and behold we came upon a bookstore uh called waterstones it was kind of in the neighborhood not too far from the hotel where we were staying and so i just ventured in because in my mind i had this idea that how cool would it be to say you know i got a book you know oh this book came from london you know because it's just a cool thing to say, right? Uh, if you're in America, I guess. So we went into the bookstore and the book that I was looking for, I've actually already read it. Um, I got a net galley copy and I talked about it at the end of last year. Uh, this could be us by Kennedy Ryan. I wanted to get a physical copy of it because I don't have a physical copy. So um, the only thing they had by her, they had the other book, the first in that series before I let go. And they only had one copy of that. But, you know, I have a copy of that on my shelf, so I struck out there. So I wasn't able to get a book just for a bragging rights, but it was a, a cool shop nonetheless to kind of, you know, venture around and, um, you know, see a lot of titles that I was familiar with and not familiar with. So anyway, we ended our journey in London by taking the Eurostar train to Paris, which is only like a two hour, two hour and 15 minute you know, jaunt <laughs> to get uh, from London to Paris, you know. So yeah, we took the train. Um, that was uh, an experience for my kids because like I said, we we had done most of this stuff before, but it's been like a decade and a half. So it was like we were seeing things with new eyes as well because, you know, a lot of stuff wasn't there when we were there before. Um, and in Paris, it was the same thing. We did a lot of touristy type stuff. We went to the Eiffel Tower at night and I never experienced that. So that was really cool to do that. Um, the Louvre was um, closed. So you would think that's a bad thing because we had no intention of going there anyway. But it was really cool because there was like nobody outside of the Louvre. Well, there were people, but not like the crowds that are normally there. So we were able to just be silly and take a lot of photos, you know, in front of the Louvre. And uh, then we walked over to see the progress that they were making on uh, Notre Dame. And on the way back, when we were walking around, we stumbled across uh, Shakespeare and Company, which is a bookstore in Paris. Uh, and uh, the Shakespeare and Company bookstore has been there since 1951. And it is an older eclectic shop with current and rare finds. Um, then I wasn't the only like bookish person because it was packed. It was like it was a tiny little um, you know bookstore, and I just thought it was cool to even have been there to see. So I kind of peeked inside and took a photo outside, but I didn't venture you know inside or through there or purchase anything. But it was a cool thing to be able to have witnessed in person. And again, you know, in Paris we also um, took 
like we were using Uber. We uh, did the subway. It was very easy to get around in, um, in, in London and in Paris. Um, we walked to the top of the um, Arc de Triomphe, you know, and, which is down at the end of the um, Champs-Élysées shopping uh, street where it's all of the name brand, you know, like Louis Vuitton, Dior, and all those stores. And uh, when I tell you, there was a 284 stairs to the top of that thing, but it had an incredible view. But, uh, you know, uh, 15 years almost it's been since I was there walking upstairs like that. And I don't think my knees are ever going to forgive me. <laughs> but it was really cool to have gone up there. And it was a lot easier coming down than going up. So unless you, like, have some type of physical uh, issue or whatever, just... You know, be forewarned if that's something that you're interested in doing. Um, you're gonna have to walk up those stairs. There's also a great view at the top of, um, I think it's called the Lafayette's Gallery. I think that's what it's called, but it's like a shopping mall type situation. And you go all the way up to the top, and you can also see all over the city. So we did that as well. And then, and a cool thing that we did in Paris because my daughter, you know, she's a little fashionista. We uh, went to the Dior Museum, uh, La Galerie Dior. It is what it, it's like a fashion museum that pays homage to legendary designer Christian Dior. And inside, like it shows like beginnings and gives a history of who you know he is and how he got started in fashion. There's like a little room with the desk he used. But the most incredible thing are the iconic like actual dresses and outfits that he designed. But it's just so amazing how they have everything displayed and it takes you on a journey through decades of his designing. And then there's one section that shows um, like an actual dress, you know, set up on a mannequin or whatever. And then a picture of like maybe a celebrity or a famous person or a model or whoever that actually wore the dress. Um, it was just, it was really, really cool. And they have this installation where, um, all of these purses and shoes and dresses that, you know, are his designs, but it's like a rainbow. It starts at the top. I don't know if it's in the, if it starts at the bottom, if it's like the, like, you know, Roy B. Give thing, the red, orange, yellow, blue, but I don't know which order it's in, but like one level is all black, one is all orange, one is all turquoise, and it's in these stairs when you're coming down. So it's a place where you see a lot of people that have gone there, like they take pictures uh, on that stairwell. So, you know, I couldn't miss out on doing that. But if you are into fashion, um, that is that is just something you have got to add to your list if you go to Paris. And even if you aren't, I thought it was a cool side ex excursion and something different from the uh, normal, you know, museums that just have artifacts or whatever. But to have all of these, um, you know, outfits and these, uh, the way that they have them displayed is just, it's just really beautiful in there. And I think that it was only like 12 bucks, but I do recommend make, getting your tickets before like you travel there. I mean, you can get them there, but then you got to stand in a longer line and, and all that stuff. So just getting them ahead of time, if you for sure know, know that you're going would be ideal. And then from Paris, we flew to Rome. We uh, took an Air France flight over to Rome. And um, I think it was like two hours, two and a half hours or something. Oh, and when we left London, we lost an hour. I can't remember if we lost an hour or gained an hour. Time is just like uh, not even real at this point to me. But you lose an hour or gain an hour when you are when you leave London to France and, and that continues on to Rome because I think Paris and Rome are in the same time zone if I'm not mistaken. Um, but anyway, we flew over to Rome and I had gone to Rome with my husband for my 40th birthday in 2010. And um, it was, the weather was mild there. The sun was out and shining the, you know, the first day that we went. And I will tell you that, I mean, most cities in Europe, they are known for their architecture and they like, um, they, keep like their buildings like they maintain them or they refurbish them on the inside or or whatever but a lot of the architecture from hundreds of years ago is still there whereas like in america a lot of times we you know we'll plow something down to put a parking garage or whatever so i will say with rome they have the the oldest like 
buildings and monuments and things like the Colosseum, for example, has been there since BC times. Okay. And so I think that when you first get there and you know, you're driving around and you're looking at everything for some people, especially if you're from America and you're not used to seeing that much, you know, historical stuff, it looks like raggedy it looks like stuff is falling down and you're like oh they need to fix this city but just it is just so incredible to me that those buildings have been there for centuries okay we're not talking about decades we're talking about thousands of years um i can't remember which there was some building we went to and it had been there since 1500s I mean, that's like 500 years ago. I mean, you know, like, or more, 700 years ago, whatever. So I personally enjoy seeing all that history and everything. Now, I will say we stayed in old Rome. When we were coming in from the airport, I noticed that there's so much graffiti there. So I guess that's a big culture there. But now that's one thing I will say. I don't care where it is, like if it's in, um, you know, what uh, the culture or anything. Uh, or what country, whether it's modern or old, I just really, in my personal opinion, I feel like it's misplaced in a lot of areas and it does make it look like it's been vandalized. I mean, there are a lot of cities and places where there are certain areas, like some of that in Houston where, you know, the graffiti and the street art and the painting on the buildings and all that, it's appreciated and it's considered art and, you know, it's confined to a certain area. But when you're just randomly, like, doing that, like, you know, over somebody's office building or, you know, I know that that's like, I guess, a thing for street cred or whatever for some people because they tag it and put their name. But th that was like, you know, uh, unfortunate, unpleasant, like, eyesore in some areas. But like I said, we were mostly in old Rome and I didn't see as much um on that side of it now there were not any bookstores or um excursions like that when we went to rome but we did visit the um like the vatican museums and the sistine chapel i said this is my second time but even it felt like the first time because it's just still so jaw-dropping and incredible you know all the frescoes and the tapestries and and everything because and i'm gonna tell you why why i feel like people may not really appreciate this stuff. There is so much technology and so much that you can do with the touching of a button on a computer, asking an AI bot to create something. These people sculpted and painted and did all this stuff by hand. The amount of detail is in Insane. The amount of time it had to have taken them. I mean, a lot of the buildings and different things that, you know, like that are over there that are still standing and, you know, stuff like the Coliseum or whatever. You have to think about there are people who started those projects, probably, you know, spanning like however long it took that they never even got to see it finished because it took so long because everything was done by hand. Even like at the Coliseum, they were showing they had these pulley systems. That's still three people pulling that up. There was nothing mechanical, nothing, you know, that made it easier for them. That is you aren't just like gobsmacked or it doesn't make your heart just beat fast or make you really, you know, appreciate what you're looking at or seeing. Then I don't know. I, 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 I don't know what to say about you because it, to me, I just, I thought it was incredible and um, just having walked the same path that a lot of people, you know, thousand years ago or so have walked that same path. That kind of stuff gives me goosebumps. I love historical things like that, like photographs or being able to see things in person. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm just waxing poetic. Uh, what else did I want to talk about on here? Um, I actually got to read believe it or not, you know, because we were on plane a couple of times and then we took the train. So I did finish a book, oh my God, that I thought was so good and I cannot wait to talk about it on the channel. Um, it was really good. Um, and I read two books, two eBooks that were on my phone. You know, I have the Kindle app on my phone. So I was able to read a couple of books. I didn't take my Kindle because, you know, we were moving around so much and had so much stuff. That was just another device that was going to have to be charged and kept up with. So I didn't even bother taking it. I had a, a actual physical copy of a book and then I read on my phone. So I was still able to get some reading in 
while on vacation, which, you know, that was pretty cool. We were like on the move a lot, but when I, when we first talked about doing this and, you know, I put it on paper, I was like, oh my God, this is, this is number one, going to be impossible. And number two, we are going to be exhausted. I mean, the exhaustion set in towards the end, like when we're getting ready to come back home, but we did everything and it didn't seem rushed or feel like we shortchanged ourselves. And it could be because we were with our kids and, you know, these younger generations, like if it were just my husband and I, that may have been too much because, you know, we like to kind of pace ourselves. Maybe let's try this place. Let's go in here. Let's go over there. And they were like, let's go over here. What is this about? Okay, let's take a selfie. Okay, get a picture of me. Okay, what's the next thing we're going to? You know, they they didn't linger or hover anywhere. So we were able to really see stuff. Um, and I will tell y'all, in Rome, you got to get gelato when you go there because it's incredible. And I don't even eat ice cream like that. I'm also not a fan of lasagna, right? But I had this lasagna at this little place where we stayed. Well, not at the hotel, but it was down the street from where we stayed. We walked down there. I've never tasted anything so amazing in my life. I mean, it was like, when people say it's like butter, it really was. The noodles were so thin and they like melted in your mouth. And there was not a, a stitch of ricotta in, in uh, lasagna. So I don't know if that's something we do over here in America or what. But it was just mostly, uh, it was like with the red sauce. The ragu is what she called it. So it was with the red sauce and uh, the ground meat and uh, a lot of um, mozzarella cheese. but Or um, like whatever kind of Italian cheese, like Fontina. I don't know if that's Italian, but you know, it melted really good. And I know... Sometimes mozzarella, it like it's still real thick and white, which I like that. But this cheese was, uh, it was so good. I'm just like getting goosebumps thinking about it. But anyway, so yeah, so we came back on Sunday, and like I said, still catching up, still got stuff to do, got to wash, got to get things back in order, got to get back on my reading schedule. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys. I'm so happy to be back. I love traveling. I love going places. I love seeing you know, new things, seeing how other people live, uh, getting to see something face-to-face -face that maybe I saw like online or on, on social media. But let me tell you something. There is no place like home, okay? So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, make sure that you like this video. And if you have not subscribed, go ahead and take the opportunity to do so now. And for all of my subscribers, why don't you share this video with someone you think may be interested and encourage them to subscribe as well. You guys enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you next week with a new book review. Bye.